Virtual try-on, VTON, also known as one-click outfit change, is a technology that allows a model to wear any provided clothing simply by combining images of the model and the outfit. Cap VTON might be the best solution in this field so far. I used it in Comfy UI to mix and match different models and clothes, trying it with real people, anime characters, and even kittens, and the results were impressive. Whether it's a t-shirt, shorts, skirt, or suit, everything fits perfectly. What do you think? How did such an amazing model stand out in the one-click outfit change arena? According to its paper, the model has three main advantages, a lightweight network, efficiently trained parameters, and a simplified inference process. Compared to similar solutions, this model shows significant advantages in handling complex patterns and text. So, how do you use this model in Comfy UI? CatVTON officially provides nodes and workflows in a compressed package, but for Windows users. The official recommendation is to use the plugin implemented by PZC163. Next, I'll explain the installation steps. However, a heads up. Installing this plugin on Windows is very complicated, as you can tell from the issue list. Moreover, due to dependency issues, there's a good chance it will affect other plugins you previously installed. Now, for those who want to challenge themselves, let me walk you through how to install the plugin on Windows. The content is quite long, nearly 5 minutes, and the operation is quite complex. If you don't need the installation or want to test the waters first, you can skip to the workflow demonstration part. First, the plugin's dependencies are quite complex and prone to conflicts. I recommend backing up the comfyui slash python underscore embedded directory or using a separate comfyui environment to install catvton, such as downloading the latest release package from the official site. The next step is to check your system environment. Unlike other plugins that mostly rely on the Python libraries within the comfyui directory, CatVTON requires a C++ and CUDA development environment within the Windows system. Open the command prompt, CMD, and type CL. If the result appears as shown in the image, you're good to go. Otherwise, you'll need to install the desktop development with C++ tools from Visual Studio. Visit Visual Studio, click Download Visual Studio, and then choose to install Desktop Development with C++. After installation, locate the installation directory, and follow me step by step until you see the CL file in the final directory. Then, add this directory to the path in the environment variables. Reopen the command prompt, type CL, and it should work fine. For the CUDA development environment, you'll need to install CUDA Toolkit. If you haven't installed it yet, visit CUDA Toolkit Archive to download it. Regarding compatibility issues between CUDA, PyTorch, and the graphics card driver, I won't go into details here. The simplest strategy is to keep your graphics card driver up to date, but keep the CUDA version stable. However, if you recently, within the last few months, installed C++ within Visual Studio, you'll only be able to choose CUDA 12.4 or higher. Otherwise, you'll get this error. On my personal computer, I installed the C++ libraries and CUDA 12.1 version a long time ago, so I won't be upgrading this time. After installation, remember to add a CUDA underscore home variable in the environment, pointing to your installation directory. To avoid the hassle of resolving conflicts, I'm using a clean weekly version of Comfy UI. Open CMD, go to the comfy UI slash custom nodes directory, and use git clone to download the plugin. The plugin author provides two will files to facilitate the installation of Detectron 2 and DensePose on Windows. My comfy UI uses Python 3.11. So click on this release to download the files. Place the downloaded files in the python underscore embedded slash lib slash site packages directory. And use the pip command to install them one by one. Since the plugin requires compilation during startup, the python environment must be complete. 
we need to check the python underscore embedded directory to ensure the libs and include folders are present. If not, copy them from a full Python environment of the same version. At the same time, we need to ensure the scripts directory is in the path of the environment variables because Ninja, which will be used for compilation, will be installed here. Alright, we're almost done. Let's open the plugin directory, back up the requirements file, then open it and replace some libraries with new ones I've tested and adjusted, leaving only the necessary ones. Then, use pip to install this requirements file. After installation is complete, start comfyui, and the nodes are loaded, indicating a successful installation. Now let's start changing outfits. The entire workflow is divided into four parts, model, mask, image, and result. Let's not change any parameters for now, just upload the model and clothing images. The model is a young lady wearing a white t-shirt and denim skirt and the new outfit is a blue striped knit short sleeve. Click Run. The first time you run it, the plugin will automatically download the model files, which will take some time. The result is out. The clothes are successfully worn by the young lady, but the color is a bit light. Don't worry, this is just the default parameter. We'll adjust it in a bit. Now let's go back and look at the functions and parameters of each node. The top left group is the model loading section, including the masking model and the outfit change model. The masking model is fixed, it only provides the mask, but you can use any tool, such as segment anything, or even hand paint. The outfit change model has three precision options, FP32, BF16, and FP16. Mathematically, the precision decreases sequentially, FP32 BF16 FP16. Logically, the effects are the same, but the model size and running time will also decrease accordingly. I'm keeping it at the moderate BF16. The top right section is for automatic masking, where you can select clothing types such as upper, lower, or overall. I just chose the upper, so the mask covered the entire upper body of the model. I will test different clothing types later. The bottom left is the image loading area with the model's image on the left and the clothing image on the right. A quick note, the model image has a ratio of 768 by 1024, and any parts exceeding this ratio will be cropped. The final section is similar to Exampler, with options for seed and whether to fix the seed. As for the number of steps, anything between 40 to 50 works, I usually keep it at 50. The official recommendation for the CFG value is to choose between 2.5 and 3.5, the higher the value, the more the result reflects the clothing image. I'll change the CFG from 2.5 to 3.5, add a preview image node, run it once, and see if it improves the effect. Comparing the two images, the result with a CFG value of 3.5 is clearly better. With more details on the clothes, the texture and material are closer to the reference image. Therefore, I'll use a CFG value of 3.5 in the subsequent demonstrations. Before running more tests, I'll delete the unnecessary nodes and move the generated images to the left for easier comparison. Some of you might wonder if the good results are because the clothing style was too similar to the one on the model. So, I'll try a denim jacket. and the result is still good. Is it because these are all images I prepared? Definitely not. Let's just randomly find a picture online. I'll open a search engine and search for a t-shirt. This rabbit shirt looks interesting. I'll copy the image, paste it into the clothing image section, and click Run. No problem, the model is wearing the rabbit shirt and if you look closely, the pattern is very complete. For CatVTON, the clothing image doesn't strictly require a clean background. I'll go back to the search results and pick this pink shirt that's already on a model. I'll paste it into the workflow and run it. 
I think it looks great, the new shirt, complete with patterns and text, has transferred perfectly onto our model. Let's keep changing clothes. I'll try a football team uniform this time, and the result is good. It feels like I could make a lot of posters for cheering on the team. We've changed a lot of clothes, so let's change the model. I'll switch the model to another girl and change the clothes back to the denim jacket I used initially. The result is still great, showing that this model is highly adaptable to different people and isn't picky about who wears the clothes. The model doesn't have to be a real person, either. This time, I'll choose a 2.5D art style model. Click Run. And she's also wearing the denim jacket, and it matches her art style very well. Duh. I'll try another model. She looks like a character straight out of a comic. And the result is perfect. Not only is the clothing style correct, but the texture also matches the original art style. Let's go even further and change to a 2D anime girl. This time, while the clothes look fine, the model's face has changed. This is likely because the auto matting covered too much area, including the girl's face. What can we do? Don't worry. As I mentioned earlier, you can use any tool to create the mask. Let me demonstrate how to paint it by hand. Disable the auto masking nodes. Right click the model image and choose Open in Mask Editor. Manually paint over the upper body of the model to control the area entirely yourself. Then, click Save to Node. Add the Convert Mask to Image node to convert the mask we just painted into an image and connect it to the CAT VTON workflow. Click Run and see the result. This time, the clothes have been successfully changed, and the girl's face remains unchanged. The model doesn't even have to be human. I'll switch to a cat-like anthropomorphic model, and just like with the 2D character, the auto-masking won't work. Open the editor, manually paint the area where the clothes need to be changed. Save, and run. The cat successfully wears the denim jacket. However, there is a slight flaw. The sleeves are shorter, probably because I didn't paint the mask long enough. We've done a lot of experiments with the upper body, so now let's look at the lower body. Switch back to the human model, re-enable the auto-masking nodes. Select lower. Change the clothing image to a pair of trousers, and click Run. You can see that the generated mask covers the model's entire lower body. After running, the result isn't ideal. The trousers were changed, but they turned into shorts. I think this is because the model's legs weren't fully included in the image. I'll try again with a full body model. And this time there's no problem. Keeping the same model, I'll change the clothes to shorts and then a skirt, and both results are good. If you want the model to wear long clothing, you need to select overall during auto matting to generate a full body mask. I tried a dress, and the model easily wore it. Keeping the same parameters, I also tried a jumpsuit and a trench coat. Both without issues. Finally, I tried a long skirt already on the model, and the result was stunning. The patterns and buttons were perfectly reproduced. I won't do more demonstrations. To summarize, CatVTON is indeed a very good one-click outfit changing solution. Simple, easy to use, fast, and with low GPU requirements, 8GB of VRAM is enough, and the results are excellent, making it suitable for many applications. Of course, it has some drawbacks. First, the installation is quite complex and may deter many users. Second, it's based on SD 1.5, so the image quality isn't as good as the current SD 3 and Flux, though you can add details by redrawing the final image. Finally, the auto matting isn't always precise, especially when handling lower body clothing. 
and may require other methods to create a more accurate mask. That's it for today's video. All the links mentioned will be in the description. See you next time.